Hey everyone, I've got a special new treat that I'm going to try. It may be familiar to a lot of you, but this is a foreign alternative. Right now I've got a hold of some sour sticks. Not sour straws, mind you. Sour sticks. With a roaring lion. Oh, he's very steamed. And he has his mitts filled with sour strings. Sticks. These are from Holland. And that's the unusual element, isn't it? <clears throat> um, they aren't packaged with a little tray, as they often are in the States. And there's tons of information here about the ingredients. And the list is in a number of languages. Uh, so it's kind of what you would expect ingredient wise but I spotted them on the marketplace shelf and being a big fan of sour straws thought I'd give them a go so the brand is called Pesquez and I do really like their uh, stylish little logo here get a good look at that so that really evokes a lot in my mind with just a little bit of graphic. So it's colorful. Um, it's got an appealing character. He's very mad. Oh, maybe he's reacting to the sourness. So, so we can hope that we're going to actually get a sour flavor this time. All right. It's unique. These sour treats do have a unique smell to them, don't they? Hmm. This one smells... fruity but it's also got that sour tingle it seems pretty pronounced I think maybe the um, level of sourness might be a little higher than I'm used to that's wishful thinking it's good it smells like a, a fruity slab and the shape of these is not straw-like at all. It's got kind of a star appearance. It's actually a six-pointed star. And it's kosher. Imported by a company in Brooklyn. So I wonder about the tradition of treats in Holland. Okay. So we're going to brave this. It's uniformly coated. You can see there's not a lot of stiffness to the straw. It's not a straw. It's not a straw. It's a stick. It's a sour stick, isn't it? But no stick will move in this fashion. Even the greenest of green wood isn't this slippery. So let's get a little taste. It's it's not hollow. I can't breathe air through the length of the string straw stick. So this wouldn't be very good to use as your drinking straw. Oh. Hmm. Already a little bit. A little sweet. It seems that maybe I've blown out my taste buds, but in the past when things claimed to be sour, they were actually sour. This has an unusual element. Of, um being almost smoke-like. 
The confection has a smoky taste. Not overt. I mean, not literally like a smoke flavor, but it's it's once again got, got kind of that hookah taste. Oh, and as I exhale to take that last bite, I mean, I fully sense that I would be exhaling smoke. So it's strange. Maybe it's the Holland influence. It's a bit tough to place. Um, it's not really around the edges of the flavor. It is pretty much up front, this strange smoked characteristic that I'm noticing. To me, having this raw sugar, just kind of being what I'm eating, I mean obviously my sugar intake is not hidden. I mean this is dusted with just sugar. So that's a little strange. But once I get past that and into the chewy strawberry it's not so bad but I think what I'm enjoying most is the novelty of the kind of smoked characteristic it's artificially flavored strawberry it's not very strong it's not very noteworthy But let's have another one. I couldn't resist uh, thinking that I would find a little bit of a difference in this foreign variety of something that we see on the shelves every day. And I was right. I mean, this is definitely giving me more of a, a unique flavor. Actually, uh, in this sour category of um, s like, like U.S. sour straws, they made... Um, these thicker ones that were much smaller and they were probably they were very thick they were like this thick maybe the thickness of almost a dime and I devoured a whole bag of those in like 20 minutes once because it was really excellent to have that really really big chewy hunk instead of a dainty little straw so I'd like to see more of that And I have always kind of liked Twizzlers. Not those funny, not the funny business of like mm, colored ones and the ones that you can peel. I thought that the flavor wasn't really that good. Not that Twizzlers, Twizzlers have a great flavor or anything anyway to start off with, but the texture of a licorice kind of a treat combined with this would make it better. And that's kind of what they had done with the chunky sour straw bites. It was a sizable bag, too. I just couldn't resist. Hmm. Can't say that I like these too much. There's nothing particularly disagreeable about them, but... Um, just getting the eye-opening realization that I'm eating tons of processed sugar and uh, for very little reward... It's a light strawberry flavor. If it was any stronger, it would be even more glaringly obvious how how bad and artificial it is. And maybe I'm smoked out now, but I'm not really getting that smoke flavor anymore. I wonder what it could be. It's probably just some common European confection ingredient.
that we don't use here very often. Oh my god. <laughs> There's a health warning. <laughs> uh oh. Oh no. <laughs> Incidentally, here's one of those L8s. I don't know if I ever do a proper review of it, but this is the soft drink from Kentucky. L8 wine. <clears throat> I got a pack just because I had talked about it in a review. All right, here's the warning. This is the, this is humorous. Hidden at the very bottom of the ingredients list at the very end, in parentheses, in tiny print, it says E129, which is an artificial color, and it mentions that it's also called Allura Red, or FD&C Red 40, may have an adverse effect on activity and attention in children. Does that mean it ups it or it drops it? Do I feel more attentive right now or less? Hard to say. In my gut, I feel very sedated, but in my mind, I feel very attentive. <laughs> I don't know what's going on now. What a strange little warning. Oh, and now I can breathe through the straw. Okay. Yeah, I suspected that I might be able to. It just I might have got one that was a little bit clogged. Isn't that weird that there's a warning about the food artificial color? Isn't most food coloring made out of those beetles? That's an interesting little tidbit. Often beetles are used as food coloring. It's like, um, I don't know, it's called like a cockinole beetle or something, but it's got, if you crush it, there's a red dye that seeps out of its body parts and that's collected and used as a red food dye. I mean it's naturally derived, it just comes from a bug that usually scurries around. Was well, that unusual? That might be the, the source of that weird smoked flavor and the reason why I feel so smoked out right now. No, I'm not really sensing it anymore. Because that sensation only really marked the first sour st stick. Well, here's one more interesting little story before I go. I was, I was camping at a festival this summer, late in the season. Um, we were booked to perform there. It was a great little festival with a good family vibe. So there was a nature walk, or what's often called a weed walk, or a forest walk, where somebody who's really versed in what's going on in the natural setting will walk around with people pointing out various plants and their uses, both in folk medicine and in like legitimate uses. Legitimate uses. And um, it was great. I had a really good time. Plus, I love guided tours of anything. Like often, uh, if I'm on vacation or something and there's a guided tour, uh, I like to do that because I like kind of the casual uh, being led on a journey sort of aspect of it, not really having to focus too much. And also the monotone voice is kind of soothing usually if you get a good guide. There's a lot of things I like about a guided tour of a different, like a house or something, like a historical home. But anyway, we're on the guided tour and um, there was only a few of us left. A lot of people had dropped off and went back to other types of festival endeavors. but. The, th the three of us, the three or four, I think there were four of us left and the guide, and we came across this awesome little bug. It was called a cherry bug, she said. It was quite large. It was probably the length and width of about f probably four nickels stacked or put side to side. So it was like this big. pretty big bug and it was black and it had bands around it uh, at the segments where the the beetle kind of moved it just had tons of legs it looked like a big crazy looking centipede black with red stripes she said "Ooh, grab it grab it it's a cherry bug 
So, fearlessly, I grabbed it up in my hand, and what happened was, it releases some type of like a pheromone or some type of a warning signal that humans can sense with their nostrils, and the scent of maraschino cherries. It was incredible. So I looked it up, did a little research. A lot of different bugs will release that sensation, or release that scent as a notification to get away. I wasn't particularly scared. I like maraschino cherries, especially if they're, you know, soaked in Everclear or vodka or something. So, if you ever see a cherry bug, or, well, maybe you'll want to know exactly what you're picking up, but if you look it up and you're in the woods a lot, and you ever notice one of those bugs, it's, it's pretty cool. I talked about it for a week after that uh, to everyone because it was, it was really, it's, it's rare in life these days to come across something completely foreign and new that seems like it could never even really exist because in my mind that mashup, you know, never would have been possible. A beetle smelling like a cherry. But it happened and it's out there and it's real and there's a bunch of them out there right now. So. Hmm. Yeah, pretty good. Yeah, I'm getting that smoke flavor again now. I'm gonna chew it up more fast. This is new to me. Maybe I never noticed it, but the flavor of um, hookah in candy. Who knew? All right, my new favorite sour stick, the hookah smoking. Lion. Maybe that's what's coming out of his ears. Puka smoke. That's what's gotten into that lion. Thanks for tuning in.